What is going on, investors? Hopefully, you guys are doing well out there. It is Friday. It is time for the weekend, and it's time for the Fang Stock Recap Show here on the Investor Channel, where every Friday we recap all the major news and the technical chart patterns from all the major Fang stocks, including this week we had a big investor day from Tesla, and we have Microsoft moving one step closer to closing on that Activision deal. But we kick things off like we always do with Meta Platforms for the week. At 172, this stock rocketing higher over 7% to finish the week at $185 per share, including a 6% move today. You are going to love the technical segment of the show if you are bullish stocks when we get to that. FTC competition chief. Holly Vadova is set to retire from the agency. This follows another FTC employee that retired rather loudly in an op-ed just a couple of weeks ago. This was this person's 30 years with the regulator. I tell you what, they should set some term limits on these types of things, but we're seeing a turnover at the FTC and we're actually seeing they're not having a lot of success that a lot of investors thought that maybe they'd be able to crack down on big tech. Obviously, we'll get to that when we get to Microsoft. Meta Platforms building a quote top level product group focused on AI, according to Mark Zuckerberg. Maybe this is what's driving the stock. Anytime you mentioned the letters AI and the stock uh, tends to do relatively well, and I would encourage Mark Zuckerberg to just continue to pump AI, whether or not they have a whole product or not. I, I'm a little bit joking there, but I actually think Mark Zuckerberg not only has the expertise, but also the product knowledge and also a product that could deliver an interesting AI product. I I don't know exactly what it would be. Most people are focused just simply on search engines, but there could be a lot, a lot of things that AI could do to continue to improve platforms like Facebook and Instagram. Meta Platforms is cutting the price of its top VR headsets. Mark Zuckerberg is saying that this is so more people can get into VR. That's another way of saying they weren't selling at the higher price. So they are cutting the price of the MetaQuest Pro to about $999 and reducing the price of a kind of a lower end model of the Quest 2 to about $429. That Quest Pro launched I believe at a $1,500 price tag. Moving on to Apple, start of the week at 147, up about 2%. Finished the week at about $151 per share. Apple is blocking a chat GPT email platform over fears that it develops content, maybe not appropriate for people under the age of 17. There is a little bit more backstory to this as this blue mail app has seen some legal battles with Apple in the past. Apple wants an age Age restriction on the app to 17. Currently, it's set at just four years old and older. I as somebody that is a parent to two kids over four, if they're using email, it, that's the parent's fault. Come on. Qualcomm CEO has no plans to provide Apple with modem chips. This is starting in 2024 as Apple just continues to move to their own proprietary, uh, especially the main parts of their phone. They've already moved to a proprietary chipset. Now it looks like they are going to likely move to a proprietary modem chip sometime in 2024, likely helping margins in the long run for Apple. The company got some good news on the regulatory front as the EU commission revises their objection. This is related to some music streaming issues that they have with the giant Spotify and other music streaming platforms don't like maybe potentially that Apple features their own music platform versus other rivals. This was a narrowing scope of this and so apple certainly welcoming that moving on to amazon start of the week at 94 bucks and the week basically flat to finish the week at 94.88 after going up about three percent during the regular trade amazon is halting work on parts of its second headquarters in Virginia. Now, they're still going to open up a tower or two, but they were planning to accommodate more employees at a office park across the street from the current location that is in development. It looks like those office towers expected to open in June. Amazon just continuing to scale things back. And when you look at the company's financials, they probably need to continue to do that. Moving on to Netflix, start of the week at 326. This is, I believe, 
believe the only stock, maybe Tesla also, down this week, down about 3.4%. This is after the company looked like they pumped out another hit when it came to streaming. The film You People was streamed over 1.5 billion hours over the weekend to give Netflix the top spot, which they often occupy. Moving on to NVIDIA, start of the week at 237. This one held up beautifully from a technical perspective. Boy, this one goes up another leg higher. The entire market is going to go along with it. But it finished flat to about finish the week at about $238. The interesting development here, NVIDIA slipped earlier in the week. A lot of these stocks kind of slipped and then they got it back the last two trading days. But it slipped as it filed a $10 billion quote mixed shelf offering. This is essentially them borrowing $10 billion. A little bit of a head scratcher because when you come over here to the balance sheet over in NVIDIA, like yes, they have less cash on the balance sheet and less kind of current assets than they did a year ago, but they have like like over $13.3 billion worth of cash. We come in down here to operating cash flows. It wasn't a great quarter for NVIDIA and most analysts, including the company's guidance, was kind of looking for a, a rebound towards the back half of the year, certainly in the next quarter. And they're still cash flow positive from that perspective. They don't have a lot of things that they need to invest their money in. So interesting. The, the thing that I've been hearing is they have all this inventory over in NVIDIA. They have $2.6 billion this time last year, all the way up to $5.1 billion. This company is hoping to dump the bulk of this inventory into the enterprise because consumers are balking at the high price of the GPUs, but because those are used in chat uh, GPT-like training, well, they're hoping that those get gobbled up by the Metas, Microsofts, and other startups of the world. Now, most analysts are seeing that that could potentially happen, but NVIDIA is playing a tricky game. If that enterprise business doesn't come on towards the back half of the year, they're going to be sitting on inventory that they're going to have to unload. And so maybe that is while they're maybe playing it a little bit safe from an investment perspective, acquiring a little bit of money at the current moment, just in case their plans to unload this inventory into the enterprise towards the back half of the year doesn't necessarily materialize. The other thing this could mean is they're going to make some kind of acquisition. That would be the, the only other reason why I think NVIDIA borrows this type of money. This is a significant amount of money. So we'll see what NVIDIA has up its sleeve in the coming quarters ahead. Moving on to Google, start of the week at 89 Probably should have bought it last week when I thought about it. Up about 4.5% finished the week at about $93. Interestingly enough, not a lot of news out of Google this week. Moving on to Microsoft, start of the week at 251 just melted up about 1.6%, finished the week at about $255 per share. Microsoft, now I'll take you in sequence of this Activision deal news flow earlier in the week, very beginning of the week, Microsoft Activision Review gets about a two-week extension from that Europe watchdog, but we started to get more information out of that as Activision Blizzard share price is now up to $78 per share as it appears that EU regulators won't demand that Microsoft actually sell off individual assets in order to acquire Activision. So that's certainly positive news. And a lot of analysts believe that Microsoft is tracking towards EU outright just straight approval of that $69 billion Activision deal as regulators likely are looking into this and they're realizing they probably don't have a lot of legs to stand on because number one, Microsoft doesn't have a dominant position when it comes to consoles. They don't have a dominant position when it comes to video games and they've agreed to allow really the one prime asset of this business to actually be sold onto competitor platforms like Nintendo in Sony. Microsoft will integrate AI-powered Bing search sometime into Windows 11 very soon via an update. Microsoft just going full-fledged on this AI, and I love the speed that they are moving at. Moving on to Tesla, just like Netflix, start the week a little bit higher at about $203 per share after the investor day. Actually slipped down quite a bit, under about $187, but got some of that back today to finish the week down about 3% to $197 per share. We got some delivery numbers as the company has been cutting the prices of their cars over the last, we'll call it 60 days, we saw some evidence that there was some strong demand.
demand. In the country of China, you saw deliveries grow 32% year over year and 12.6% sequentially quarter over quarter. But there is some data that maybe towards the back half demand waned a little bit in the country of China. So we'll have to see subsequent quarters for Tesla. Now, the company fell on its quote, save the earth let down on that investor day, which I'll take you through some of the slides and some of the pertinent information with Tesla. But many analysts believe that legacy automakers might be in quote, big trouble. Not that the legacy automakers will be going out of business, but the legacy, I think what a lot of people are underestimating is the amount of investment that the legacy automakers still have to go in order just to kind of get to where Tesla is at today. We'll see if they end up getting there. Now, Tesla's bid to become the world's largest automaker could get a boost. We got a Mexico Gigafactory, which I'll show you just a gorgeous picture of here in a moment. Obviously, Tesla's whole business model revolves around pumping out these cars and these batteries to a lesser degree. And so another Gigafactory, certainly from the track record they have of opening the one out here in Fremont, California, then one in Texas, one in China, one in Europe, and now Mexico. I tell you what, as an investor, you got to pretty much believe believe in what they're having to do. Now, the company didn't roll out anything specific from a new product perspective, and I think that had some investors disappointed, but you have your essentially your product roadmap here. What I think was interesting here is they're putting the Cybertruck in a category very similar to like the Model Y and Model 3, and so they're expecting these Cybertrucks to fly off the shelves. That could be an indication of the number of pre-orders. There's obviously a lot of rumors and a lot of speculation around the number of pre-orders that they have. You can see evidence of a little bit on the balance sheet in terms of reservations. Well, I tell you what, if that Cybertruck is a hit and it's as big as the Model 3 and the Model Y, well, there's probably going to be a lot of profits coming for Tesla. Now, this is what's interesting for shareholders is the company is going to reduce kind of the footprint that is required in order to make these vehicles. Most cars are made like this kind of in a horizontal fashion. It appears maybe they're going to try to flip these vertical and it's going to reduce the footprint that is required to work on these cars. That's going to make the company more efficient. It's going to allow them maybe to even take their existing factory where they're making these cars and potentially pump out even more. That's what's impressive about Tesla. I know all maker, all automakers are doing these types of things. Tesla seems to do it at a speed that is a little bit faster than legacy automakers. Now, they show you here that they're going to be able to reduce their footprint by over 40%. Again, that's going to maybe allow them to, in the future, maybe not have to build these big, gigantic factories that cost billions of dollars and require lots and lots of infrastructure. They might be able to shrink those and then maybe create more of them or it's just going to allow the existing ones to get more and more efficient into the future. Obviously beneficial for shareholders if they're able to pull this off. They didn't give us a peek under the curtain, if you will, of their next scalable platform, but they teased it just not enough, I think, for shareholders. Now, the other thing that they're working on more, you know, more or less under the hood, almost literally under the hood over at Tesla is reducing the number of wires and the connections. They show you here 2000, 2012, all these wires and all these connections. Obviously, that takes a lot of labor and parts and you know infrastructure and logistics. It's very much shrunk on the Cybertruck. Again, they tease that their next generation vehicle might even be more simpler than that. Here's the impressive part. So certainly from a building perspective out in China, you certainly couldn't do that here. Most places in the United States certainly couldn't do this out in California with all the red tape they'd have you go through. But here's in January 2019, the Shanghai high factory and just 9.5 months later it is fully operational i would imagine in mexico there is a you know very little red tape so they're going to be able to scale this factory up relatively quickly moving over to the technical segment of the show and this uptrend that we've been in since the month of October really I wouldn't say it confirmed itself solidly today but it took a gigantic step to just literally confirm that this uptrend that we've been in again since October 
is still in place. And this is now the trend that we're looking at. Talked about on last week's show, it was a critical week for the stock market. Didn't necessarily know if we'd get an answer, whether we'd kind of dump through this key area of support, maybe retest some lows that we made back in December. I thought if you would have asked me what would have happened, I thought we'd just hesitate right here and just kind of hold and like being a little bit of holding pattern and something like that could have lasted a, a week or two and really not have been a concern. But no, we absolutely absolutely found footing here to put up a gigantic green candle. It appears we are heading higher. I put in kind of a way to calculate how much higher we have to go to move higher than the highs that we made back in February. Because again, in this uptrend, an uptrend is higher series of lows. We've confirmed that one twice. And then I would say almost two and a half times we've confirmed that higher highs as well. Made some highs in November, made slightly higher highs in February. It looks like we're on the path to doing that again. That's just four or 5% higher. I tell you what, if you've been on the sidelines, you need to start asking yourself why, because right now this technical pattern is starting to confirm these. Now it could reverse next week. We could head lower, but as long as you don't break below these lows that we made again, basically the first week of March at about 3940 on the S and P 500, if you don't break down below those, I would expect we're going to move higher at least probably three to 5% higher, maybe as high as 6% higher likely over the next 30 days or so moving over to our Fang stocks. Meta made a massive reversal. Here's what I noticed about Meta. So I had this gold line. I was expecting us to kind of revert back to this gold line. I'm going to show you actually something different. No, Meta is still on this massive, look at this uptrend that we're in. This actually confirmed itself this week. Now we're still kind of in the, you know, obviously intermediate term, the stock is still down tremendously. Longer term, the stock is actually more or less in an uptrend still, but we still have kind of some lower highs here. So we'd like for this one to push above this area at 198. That would be surprising to me, but there is some momentum play, a little bit more higher risk type stuff, not stuff that I tend to recommend, but I might get into this one some somewhere over the 190s. I could see playing the kind of momentum from 190 up to this area of resistance up here to 219. That would be about a 10% move that you could capture. I think in meta, you buy it like maybe 195 set a stop loss at like 190 or something like that. Play this maybe potential continuation of this very, very steep uptrend. Eventually this uptrend is gonna to have to shallow out at the very least. But in the meantime, Meta kind of confirmed that this week, very surprising. Now, Apple still looks like the path of least resistance is lower since you have overhead resistance, which it's sitting on essentially at 150. You've got higher overhead resistance at 157. You've got a series of lower highs, really just trending with this stock for about a year now. Very bullish for these markets is if Apple is able to pull and kind of power up through these. I don't necessarily, I'm not necessarily anticipating that. Apple likely going to continue to see pullbacks in the coming months. And I think you continue to buy that stock as they continue to buy back the stock, uh, you know, almost as much as anything. Now, Amazon just kind of tracing back on the, doing kind of a back test on this black trend line that we have here. And, it, you know, look, it's basically kind of halfway into the consolidation box that we have. If you like Amazon, you like it for the long term. Looks like to me, it's trying to find some area to start making an uptrend. Similar stocks that we've looked at, maybe Google, certainly Microsoft, absolutely NVIDIA, absolutely Netflix. I think eventually Amazon is going to start looking like those stocks. And I actually think we're getting close to where we can call the beginning of that with Amazon here very soon. Now, Netflix did pull back this week, but it pulled back to a very predictable area. This green trend line, you can move it around. You can move these things around a little bit if you want. If this trend continues to play out, well, Netflix should get a bounce. You should go from about 315, maybe at or above 350 on the rebound. So there's certainly some shorter term stuff with Netflix. If it gets rejected here, that's kind of bearish in my opinion. You'd be taking out these higher lows. But at some point, Netflix probably going to go a little bit more sideways than kind of the 100% rally that it's been on 
over the past several months. Moving on to NVIDIA, just hanging out, just hanging out here at the top of the range. Obviously, again, an uptrend is a series of higher highs, higher lows. We are towards the high end. I know a lot of really professional traders have been kind of piling in this one short, and that's probably the trade I would take if I had to put a trade on with NVIDIA. Yet this one's got to give it back at some point, I guess. But man, people are just continuing to ac accumulate this stock, and the sellers have just simply have dried up. But if you get any kind of pullback south of, we'll call it 198, 195, maybe into the 190s over a short period of time, I, I know that seems like a long ways away. We're at 240 on this stock getting back to 190, but that would just be more or less kind of confirming this trend with NVIDIA. The other thing it could do is just continue to rocket higher, which again would have me probably pressing the sell button if I was an investor. Moving on to Google, we talked about last week, this one it was at 89 and I was literally logged in to my retirement account and I was almost pushed the button to buy and I didn't, but no big deal. You should meet some resistance, basically where the stock is right now at 93. It could push higher into next week, get into kind of the 95, maybe 96, maybe even all the way up to 100. There should be some overhead resistance. You get another pullback on Google. It's looking to me like this one wants to bottom. You had lows back here in November, higher set in January, higher set in February. You make another higher set maybe sometime in March. That would be the opportunity, I think, for longer term investors. Moving on to Microsoft also low here, higher lows, higher lows. This one also reversed this area right here. We'll call it like 240, 250 ish is looking where buyers are starting to step in. This is looking good. It looks like we could potentially maybe retest the top of the platform up here with Microsoft. I'd take you another maybe ten, as much as 10 percent higher. This one could continue to rally if it doesn't wouldn't really be that that big of a deal. Honestly, you could fall about 10, 11% and really just kind of confirm these higher lows on this one. This is, you know, we've taken away a lot of technical damage, not in every stock, but a lot of it is starting to be mitigated to a certain degree. Now, moving on to Tesla, anytime I see kind of this rounding kind of hunchback type of thing, I don't get super excited from a technical perspective, but we are holding this level with Tesla. And we've talked about this level numerous times, especially during this kind of a year, you know, year and a half, two year long sideways action that the company went on this area at we'll call it like 180 ish and when it ish ish with tesla is like plus or minus maybe like 10 percent. so somewhere in that 180 200 range that is holding with tesla wouldn't necessarily love uh, from a technical perspective wouldn't really love to see it break that way because you know look a higher low could be as low as like 120 on this stock but this one continued to push higher you've got overhead resistance up here at 230 a little bit higher we'll call it about 250 you get up there you'd really want to push higher on tesla you've got to get retest these highs that we made back in 20 22 up at 350 to really say that the downtrend is over. But I tell you what, from a technical perspective, things are actually looking pretty good. And I'm as shocked as anyone that this stock market really, it appears that it made another set just perfect set of higher lows this week. I thought for sure we were probably going to pierce through it. I thought for sure we could hesitate and hang out for a minute. The last thing I would have predicted is we would have had just a perfect technical bounce off this area and start to move higher. But that is what looks like is going to happen. We'll see if it's confirmed next week. And we'll certainly be here again on Friday. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful weekend out there. Be safe and we'll see you again next Friday. Good luck with your investments.